My name is Dwight Gillespie. I want to welcome you to the Change Your Life uh, channel on YouTube. And here we, we give you practical information on living a better life and uh, to, to stop leading that mediocre life. Uh, if you haven't done so already, please hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit that notification button. We do release uh, on this particular channel, we release every Sunday, I want to say. So we have another channel, which is called Trash TV Review. We release there on every Thursday. And you can go over there and you can also hit the like button, hit the subscribe, the notification, all that other good stuff. Because the more the merrier. Anyway, uh, as I said, uh, my name is Dwight Gillespie, as you may know, if you've been watching this. Um, we do give you some practical information, and we talk about topics that, that may or may not help you. Uh, hopefully, we do. We were just having a long discussion about that, as a matter of fact. Today, we're going to talk about uh, one, of the, one of the things. Um, we live in a very sensitive society, and we call it something called cancel culture. Like, this is something new, right? When I was a kid, there was no such thing as cancel culture. Uh, and now you have cancel culture. And, and a lot of that comes from, they say, you know, uh, that whole idea of don't judge me. Don't be judgmental. And I find that very odd, right? Because sometimes it is my belief uh, that you have to be sometimes. But it's it, it's not necessarily judge, being judgmental. And, and here's here's the topic, and this is the, the title, if you will. And it's the difference between uh, being judgmental and, and being observant, right? It's the observation versus judgment. <clears throat> and what does that mean? Well, to be judgmental, I, I, I judge your life. I, I say you're bad or you're good or you're this or you're that, right? Uh, and that's not the case. I don't believe really in doing that to anybody, to be honest with you. Uh, a big thing that I have on this channel, and many of you know if you've been watching, is uh, I, I've lost a lot of weight and I'm, I'm really big on uh, being afraid of being fat again. And I am. I'm absolutely what they call fat phobic. And that's like a, a cue, right? People call you that to, to like shame you into shutting up about this. But I don't worry about this because I am, I am scared of being fat again, right? I don't worry about it because I know the benefits I've derived from losing weight. And those benefits are all physical, like they're health, health motivated, right? I was pre-diabetic. I, I was hypertensive. Uh, I, I have had a knee replacement. I, I was looking at having another one. Uh, both my hips were going. And, you know, so all of these things that were happening as, as a result of, of my weight. So I lost weight. Now, here's the difference between judgment and observation. Now, I, I can observe in people that they're overweight without judging it. And I don't because I've been there. I know what it's like to be there. I know what it's like to be stuck and think that I couldn't do this, that I couldn't lose the weight and everything, right? Uh, judgment is saying, uh, you know, and I, I, I experienced this. I've had twice, and, and I got to tell you, want to <laughs> see me get really pissed off. And last time I was in a meeting, and this is why I can't stand this. Don't touch me. Don't, <laughs> don't touch me. And I had, uh, there was one particular time a guy came up and, and he patted my stomach. And I didn't even really know this guy. It was, I was in a, a recovery meeting. I, I go to a 12 step program and, the and he patted my belly. And he says, Oh, it looks like we're not missing many meals. And I said, who, you know, who the heck are you? Right. Cause we try not to swear here. It's not really what I said, by the way. We're paraphrasing here. I said, who are you to touch me? Don't ever touch me. If you touch me again, I will hurt you. Like, like no doubt. Don't, don't even mistake it. I will hurt you. You know, who, who is anybody, right? Because it was that judgment and it was, he was judging me. Oh, we're not missing many meals. Not, not anything out of concern. Like, wow, you know, I, I, I can help you with that or whatever. And even that I think is overstepping your bounds, right? Another time it was a kid who came up, same thing, patted my stomach and says, oh, we're eating like an hecativo, he says. I don't even know what the frick that meant, right? I mean, I do because, you know, I lived with a Spanish woman for 25 years, Puerto Rican woman. But, you know, I, 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 I eat like an executive, right? Who says, and don't touch me. And, and I got to tell you this, what really bothered me about that was I, was I had actually just started the program that I'm on. That this happened almost exactly a year ago. And I was actually down 10 pounds. And I went to that meeting that night feeling good about myself. Right, because I'd lost ten pounds, and I'm moving in the right direction. Right, I, I know I'm moving in the right direction. And here, this this idiot comes up and pats my stomach and tells me, "I'm oh, we're eating like an who are you to touch me?" I'm getting off the subject there. <laughs> Let me get back on the subject because it's observations versus judgment. And to me, both those people were definitely judging me. That was judgment. That wasn't talking to me out of concern, right? I was talking. I had two friends. I had one friend passed away, and uh, he was just about seventy years old, and um. 
he ate what he wanted. He he smoked two packs of cigarettes a day. He, you know, he uh, he didn't exercise, did nothing to, to help himself, you know, in, in that way. And he died, 70 years old, massive coronary in, in dead. And he had a very good friend uh, who I knew who, who said, he said, I feel like a very bad friend. I never said anything to my friend out of fear of him thinking I was judging him, right? I watched him eat and smoke himself to death without doing anything about it. And what kind of friend am I? Like if he was drinking himself to death, I would have said something. If he was using heroin, I would have said something. Like, and here it was, he was eating and smoking himself to death and I never said anything and I let, and I let it go. And, and that's concern, right? Um, and again, I, I say uh, there's, another, there's another aspect to this obs- observing as opposed to judging, right? That I can say things out of concern. Like, how do I know how I want to be if I don't at least observe you doing what you're doing, right? In a recovery program, and I don't care what, we pro- what recovery program it is, we, we always say uh, there's things called sponsors. We say you listen for a sponsor, right? Uh, if you find somebody who's living the life you want to live, do what they do, right? If you want what I have, do what I do. And that works in everything. There's a, a great book by Maxwell Maltz called Psycho-Cybernetics. And really the gist of it is, is that no matter what it is in life you want to be good at, you, you want to be a serial killer, you know, study Ted Bundy, right? Yeah. Like study the people who've been successful with this, right? And I'm not telling you people, please, no letters, please. I'm not telling you to go out and become serial killers. It's ridiculous. But anyway, sometimes you got to specify because we live in a very sensitive culture. Yeah. Um, but how do you know what it is you want if you're not judging that or at least observing it? As I say, I, I, I like to think that I'm open-minded enough where I'm not judging people. Like, I don't judge people who are still heavy. That was me. That's me. I don't judge people who are still, like, I, I, I go to a 12-step program, as I say, and, and I, don't, I don't use any mind, mood or mind-altering substances, right? Um, and there are people that have a very difficult time with this. I had a difficult time with it for, for, for decades, Okay, it wasn't the easiest thing, and I know people in in my in the programs that I attend that they they look down. Oh, can you believe that he, he used he used again? I'm like, well, yeah, I I can actually because I've been there, and I'm not there now, but I could be there again one day. I don't know. It's like I don't judge people who overeat because I overeat a lot. I have a problem with food, and once I started eating particular foods, sugar and flour specifically, I can't stop. So I don't judge people who are doing that, but I do observe it. And I observe what happens to people when they start it again, right? People say, oh, diets don't work. Every time I die, I, 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 you know, once I start eating again, well, no, shit. you know, they're saying, oh, you know, these heroin recovery programs don't work because every time I start shooting dope again, type shit happens. Go figure. Really? Who would have thought, right? You got cirrhosis of the liver. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I stopped drinking, you know, booze for a week and the liver's still f- uh, Who would have thought, right? Try not to swear. It doesn't work. I say f- a lot. It's one of my favorite words. I'm a writer and I really think as a writer that to limit your vocabulary is a very, very negative thing. But anyway, this also brings up a thing about choosing your mentors wisely, Right what is it you really want? And at different aspects, at different at different points in your life, different things become important, right? And I know this guy in recovery is a really good guy. And he tells a story about when he was a kid, right? Growing up in the projects. And, uh, and he watched this guy shoot somebody, right? Now, he was a little kid. I think he was maybe even preteen or early teens anyway. And he watched this guy shoot somebody else on the playground inside the projects because he disrespected his girlfriend, right? And my friend says he thought that was like the oh yeah, that's 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 manhood, you know, disrespecting your girlfriend, you shot. Him. So this guy winds up getting a 25 to life sentence, yeah. And it took this it took my friend years in recovery to realize just how stupid that was. Like over some woman, like and here they were, they were like they were they were late teens themselves. The guy who did it, right? And he's going to spend twenty five of his years in jail for a girl that he probably wouldn't have even been with in another six months. You know, like, 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 like the, the, the the lunacy of that. And how do you know that's crazy unless you observe it, unless you judge it, right? And that's that. that there's. There's that that comes into play. And sometimes you see these things and you just have to walk away from them, right? 
But you can't if you don't take a look at it, a hard look, and really listen to what people are saying. And I always bring it back to the fat phobic stuff because, you know, I, I remember the first time online, and, and I, I do these things. I'm on Quora a lot. I, I'm on Reddit, and I, I do these things, right? And I make these statements. And, and I remember the first time I was challenged on that. And, and some some um, person, I, I, I'm going to assume it was a female name, so I'm going to assume she was maybe perhaps a woman. I don't know. I, I Again, I don't want to assume. What do I know? This person went off on me about being fat phobic. And at first I was like, uh-oh, you know, like, oh, I'm going to get canceled. And then I thought about it for a moment and I said, well, I'm just observing myself. And without judging myself, I'm telling you right now, my observation is, is that my life is better now doing these things to make myself healthier than they were before. And I used to justify those actions because I was, oh, God, I'm not, uh, people judge me. And everything. No, 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 no. I judge myself, right? Because I know the life I led before I started to do this wasn't as full as the life I lead doing this, right? And how does that come? How do I come to that? How do I, how do I arrive at that decision is, is to judge and to observe. Like, what's going on here? Yeah, I can walk better. I feel better. I don't wake up in pain every day. I can walk further without being winded. You know, I, I, I do so many things better now. I exercise more, right, so that, that, that gets my body in time. I don't want to die. Yeah? And when I look and, and, and I say, again, without judgment, look, you want to eat yourself to death, that's your business. But don't piss down my back and tell me it's raining. To tell me that you're just as healthy, you're a liar. Now, that, that person who attacked me on Cora, after I thought about it, and I said, I'm okay being fat phobic. I'm okay with that label. You want to label me? Okay, I'm good with that. If you want to tell me that, 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 that what's the other one, the, the, the body shaming thing, I don't do that. That I don't believe in. I've, I've received that. Like people patting myself, who the hell are you to touch me? You know, or, or people who wanted to, oh, well, you know what you need to do. I always loved that. You know, people see you lose a couple of pounds. They go, oh, so what are you doing? And you say, well, I'm doing uh, X, Y, and Z. Oh, well, you know what you need to do. And I look, uh, where the f*** were you when I was eating Burger King six days a week? You know, like, shut up. It's none of your business, right? That's judgment. Don't judge me. I'm doing what I do. It's none of your business what I do, right? If you really want to have a serious conversation, if you're concerned for yourself, then we'll talk about it. It's not my place to tell you how to live your life. But I do learn from other people. And if you don't, then you're really kind of screwed, right? And I remember telling this young lady, I said, you know, I bet anything you're under 40. I, I bet anything you haven't been talked to about uh, knee surgery or diabetes or, you know, a fatty liver or any of the other wonderful things that happen to your body as a result of being obese after the age of 40 or 45, right? Because that's when all that stuff started happening to me. And given that, I observe that it is better for me to live a healthier lifestyle than not. And this comes in many different forms. I tell the, 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 the story about being at High Light one time, and this guy's telling me, and I never went to High Light before. This is, I don't even know if it's still there. It was up in Milford, Connecticut, and it's a game where people like, throw a ball against a wall and they catch it with this funny scoop thing, and you bet on it, you know, it's gambling. He's telling me all night, ah, oh, I bet on that. Take Gonzalez, take Garcia, because everybody's Spanish. I don't know why. I think it's a Cuban thing, because I, I think it started down in Miami, and it came from Havana, maybe. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Uh, again, I'm not judging, just observing. <laughs> um, but he's telling oh, I bet this. And I finally looked at this guy after I'm losing all night long. And I look at this guy. He's like homeless. He's got this disgusting coat on with like snot all over it and everything. His clothes were I'm like, who the hell am I listening to, you know? I go to a doctor when, when I'm sick because it wouldn't pay to go to my accountant. He doesn't know much more about it than I do, I wouldn't think, you know. I, 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 I get my information from people who are equipped to give me that information. The information I give you here is from life experience. This is what I've experienced in, in life. And I'll never tell you how to live your life. You know, we were talking about this before. I, I've had people beg me, tell me not to do it. And I tell you, you're grown. Man, you're a grown man. Beep. <laughs> you're a grown man. You got to make your own decisions, right? And we have another uh, another podcast about that, about like abdicating your your responsibility in your own life and letting people make the decisions in this way, you know. And we we did one, or we're gonna do one on that. I, I don't I don't remember which. Um, we'll go over that again. 
but that's you know when you get people to make those decisions for you uh and and, and nobody can do that for you but i do observe because i i know where i want to be and i want to follow the people who know how to get there you know uh you talk about money I, I i have plans i have goals i write my goals down i'm very big on this write your goals down and write how you're going to do it right because i used to have it up here but when, when, when you write down when you write down your dreams they become goals and when you write down your goals you you develop a a, a process of getting to that goal right and what I want to do is I want to I want to follow the people who've done those things before me and who've achieved those things before me. You know, I have a particular relative who's great on giving advice. And this person's never really worked an honest day in their life. They've never had a positive relationship. They've never done anything with their life. But they'll tell you how to do yours, boy. Ooh, yeah, they know everything about it. I'm not going to follow that advice. You want advice on how to have a good relationship with your spouse? Find somebody who's been lovingly married for, for a, a, an extended period of time, and you'll find somebody. Yeah, my buddy Walter here, he's, he's in a loving relationship. I'll take relationship advice from somebody who knows how to be in a successful relationship, who knows how to negotiate in a relationship, who knows how to give and take. And that's what it takes to have a healthy relationship. I don't know anything about it. I've never been in a healthy relationship. You know, you might as well ask me how to build a rocket to Mars. I don't know. I've never done it before, you know? And I don't think that that day is coming anytime soon. I don't know if you've noticed, like sometimes it can be a bit of a... But... <laughs> Again, it's negotiation. Um, but again, uh, finding finding the proper mentors, finding people who are doing what you want to do and who are successful at it and who give you a strategy for doing it, you know, um, it's, 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 it's so important. It doesn't matter what it is, no matter what you want to do. You want to be a better golfer, uh, buy, buy videos by Tiger Woods and you'll learn how to be a better golfer. You know, you, you, whatever it is you want to do. And, and again, you want to be a better serial killer. Hey, there's videos out there, you know, and uh, so, it's a little hard, right? But anyway, that is the difference between observation and judgment. You know, people say, don't judge me. Say, I'm not judging you. I'm just observing you. And I don't want to do what you do, right? You listen to people talk about their futures and their careers and they're sitting home smoking pot, playing video games all day. And they're talking about, I don't understand why my life is so bleak. Well, get off your ass and do something. Follow somebody whose life isn't so bleak, right? And that's another thing with this is, is, is get away from the negativity, you know? And that, again, is an observed behavior. When you observe people who are just absolutely negative, spiritual vampires that, that clamp onto you and they suck all the life right out of you. Who are the guys in the, in the Harry Potter? You watch the Harry Potter movies? No. The, the, the mentors. They were the mentors. And they were, it, was a, it was a great character because all they did, they were like these, these, these giant monsters, right? And they... And they suck the soul right out of you, right? I know people like that. The dementors. That's what they're called. The dementors. We got to do a whole thing at the mentors, right? Because it's, and they, and you, and you can see the soul coming out of the person, right? And it's, oh God, my mother was a dementor. Yeah. Dementor. Uh, that was a uh, he, he man. Anyway, anyway, listen. I want to thank you for tuning in today. I want you to have a wonderful week. My name is Dwight Gillespie. This is Change Your Life. Stop leading that mediocre life. Go out there and live life to the fullest. Life is meant to be lived, not survived. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Hit the like button. Hit that notification button so you know when we're downloading stuff, right? Or uploading or whatever the hell it is that Walter does. I'm not really sure. And, uh, and go ahead and comment and do all those good things. And uh, we answer all comments here. My name is Dwight Gillespie. Have a wonderful week. Be well. We'll see you next time. Thank you.